Hey there, I'm Lauren O'Neill and this is Project London Arts and Culture. I'm at the Arts Project in London, Ontario right now. Let's go inside and check out what's going on. Exhibit called a curious collection of monstrous tinies and it's called that because as you can see things are monstrous and tiny. Um, the exhibit is organized by a group called the Shadowwood Collective and it started with two friends Sarah Legault who does this and Vincent Marconi who does this. Now a curious collection of monstrous tinies is pretty significant for London because to be honest these artists are kind of a big deal. I mean, they've had their work featured by bands like Korn and The Misfits, and they've also been in movies. Movies like Resident Evil 2 and Frank Miller's 300. Not to mention, some of these artists, the fashion artists, have had their stuff on the runways at Toronto Fashion Week. Yes, it's true, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of talent in this city. And speaking of which, the London Community Players are kicking off their 36th season on Friday with a show called A Thousand Clowns. Our very own Jeff Turner was lucky enough to get a sneak preview. That's right, Lauren. I'm literally behind the scenes at London's 90-year-old Palace Theatre. And as you can see, the stage is set for the London Community Players' new production of A Thousand Clowns. For director Don Flexer and the rest of his team, Theatre is all about community. College instructors, car salesmen, and students all come together to make it happen. And it's all for the love of the show. What can you tell me about community theatre? Uh, why are you in community theatre? Is it all about the cash, the big money? Yes, it is, it is about that, yes. I'm, certain, I'm paid thousands of dollars to direct these plays. Um, community theatre is, is just at the heart of theatre. It's, it's everyone coming together uh, to put something on that is going to bring in a whole lot of people in the community. Once you start working here, it becomes almost like a family of people. Stage manager Pat Bell is a part of that family. It's, I think it's like summer camp. You know, you, you work really hard, you have a lot of fun for a short period of time. You make friends for life, um, and then it's over and then you relax until the next show. So for now, the seats are empty and the curtains are drawn, but uh, we're actually just five minutes away from opening night of A Thousand Clowns here at the uh, Palace Theatre on Dundas. And as you can see, it's a real community effort that goes into putting on productions like this. I'd like to thank uh, Don and everybody else here for uh, giving us this chance to see the behind the scenes of a community play. Thanks, Jeff. Are you hungry? Because my friend Isabella was. So she went to check out this really cool event called Food Fusion. Now what it is is more than 20 restaurants in London coming up with set menus for a fixed price and donating a portion of their proceeds to a charity called Heartlinks. We're here at Jambalaya and I'm about to speak to head chef and owner Kevin Reeves all about the restaurant and why he decided to get involved with Food Fusion. We look at Jambalaya as being not a Cajun restaurant or a Caribbean restaurant, but a royal restaurant. Jambalaya will be a part of London's very first food fusion from February 22nd to the 25th. I always wanted to be involved in something where it's helping people in the world who are starving. And when I was approached about food fusion, I decided it's time enough that I step up to the plate and do something. So. One dish the chef will probably be making a lot of over the next few days is his jambalaya stew, which along with pad thai, is one of the most ordered dishes on the menu. And that's it for me, Lauren. Delicious. Thanks, Isabella. All right, so in case you happen to be living under a rock or something and missed the opening ceremonies of this year's Olympics, I'll fill you in. There was this performer named Shane Coys in there, and he's a slam poet which is pretty cool and significant in London because we've actually got a pretty bump in slam poetry scene. I caught up with the organizer of the London Poetry Slam, Elise Melton, earlier today. 
It was the summer of my requisite post-graduation identity searching trip to Europe. And in my last days in Paris, as all cliched soul searchers should, I walked the left bank with a friend discussing the meaning of life. The greater part of the conversation I've forgotten, but in the years since, one phrase has remained clear. As we hit upon the topic of despair, she said depression is just a lack of gratitude. Having more than once defied the clutches of that particular black hole, I bulked, ego smarting at her assessment and vehemently countered her point. After mulling it over for years though, I think I've finally come to understand. See, she wasn't trying to blame anyone for their darkness. Like me, she had fought those demons, tried medicating her way to a livable balance between numbness and heart-splitting agony. No, what she was really trying to say was that depression, far from a petty lack of thanks, is really about forgetting. You can see Elise performing live at the two-year anniversary of the London Poetry Slam on Friday, February 26th at the London Music Club. Check out our podcast for more details. All right, I am joined right now by the incomparable Mr. Bruce Johnson, president of the Arts Project. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Johnson. It's my pleasure. Thanks for that lovely introduction. Oh, you're incomparable right. isn't something I'm not often with. <laughs> well, I like it. I like it. I cannot compare you, so you are so, therefore so, incomparable. Fair enough. Let's stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what can you tell me about the Arts Project? Um, I think the best way to describe the Arts Project is in three words, and that's gallery, theater, studios. We're standing in the North Gallery, behind me is the South Gallery, two separate exhibits, and beyond the South Gallery, farther south, is in fact the, uh, the theater. Ab above us in the second and third floors, there are 11 studios, all occupied at least to artists that are basically, uh, I'd say, the, some of the mainstay artists of our, our community here in London. So this is a pretty significant space for the local arts and culture community. We like to think it's the most significant space, and I think the more people discover it, the more they come to realize that it's a very important component of the arts community, for sure. That's definitely. awesome. So now let's get down to the heart of the matter. Who is this lovely lady we're standing beside here? Well, this is Svetlana. She lost her head on Tuesday a week ago during a fashion show. This is actually part of the uh, Monsters Tiny show, and uh, the overall exhibit included a fashion show, live music, body suspension, so what we're seeing here is just one portion of that fashion show. Thanks for joining us. If you want to learn more about Project London, check out our website at www.uwojournalism.squarespace.com. Peace.